Okay, welcome to our video on multiplying by a monomial. So that means here that we're, we're dealing with... Welcome to our practice video on multiplying out polynomials. So here, we've got to simplify. And here you might recognize right away that the number 10 is being multiplied, right? These parentheses here mean multiply by each of these parts. This is a part, one term, and this is another part right there. So what do we do? Well, to distribute this 10, we multiply it by 2x here and get 20x. Why do we get 20x? Well, one way to think about it is just to multiply the number 2, the coefficient of this term, right, the number next to the variable, times 10, and that gives us 20. Another way to think about it is to remember that, well, 2x really represents x plus x, right? That's what 2x means. You have two x's. So imagine if you had two x's multiplied 10 times, right? That would mean you'd have 10 groups of two x's, right? And if you had 10 groups of two x's, that would be 20 x's altogether. Right, so here I'm saying, you know, one, two, three groups, and so forth, all the way up to ten. Adding them all up would give you twenty x's. Now, what do we do next? Well, we're going to multiply ten by, you can think of this as negative point two y, or you can think of it as subtracting ten times positive two point, point two y. Uh, either way, we're going to get a subtraction or negative value here, and then we're going to multiply ten by point two y's. So how do we do that? Well, resist the urge to grab a calculator. Because here, when you're multiplying anything by 10, what happens? Well, 10 times point two ends up just being two. Because the decimal is moved over one to the right, from point two to 2.0, right? Because every time we multiply by 10, our decimal moves once to the right. So what do we write next? Well we're subtracting 2y. And now we're done here because here we can't really subtract out the the 2y from 20x. The x and the y are different variables, so they're not like terms. We can't simplify anymore. Let's try another one. What if you had 12 times 2 thirds m minus 4n. Very similar here. So of course try it on your own and, and resist that urge to grab a calculator. Well now I mean here we have 12 times our first term. So we have 12 times 2 thirds really times m. Or well what's this? Well to multiply 12 by 2 thirds you can multiply 12 by 2 to get 24. It's still over 3 right we still have the m here. And 24 over 3, that's just 24 divided by 3, or 8, so 8m. And our first term will be 8m. And now we subtract our next product. 12 times 4n is what? Well, what was 12 times 4? That's, that's 48. And we get 48n. And here we're done, because we can't simplify anymore. Let's switch it up a little bit and try some with negatives. So here's negative 8 times 4r minus 1 fourth s. Everything's the same, but now we have to remember that we're distributing not a positive number here, or a positive factor, but a negative one. So first we have negative 8 times 4r. Multiply negative 8 by 4. What's that? Well, a negative times a positive is negative, and that's negative 32. R. And then we have negative 8 times this over here, and I'm going to think of it as negative 1 fourth s. And that is going to end up being positive, right? Because a negative times a negative is positive, and we have negative 8 times negative 1 fourth s. Negative 8 times, one, times negative 1 fourth. How do we do that? Well, we multiply the 8 by the, by the 1, or in this case, the negative 8 times negative 1. It's positive 8 over 4. And that means 8 divided by 4, or 2. So we have negative 32r plus 2 
And don't forget that we're doing that in terms of s. So 2s. Let's try another one. We'll build off of this idea of negatives. I'm going to clear the page there. So next we have another, another polynomial. We have negative 16 times 3 over 4, or 3 fourths c, minus 5 over 8, right, 5 eighths d. And we're going to distribute, right? You see all, all of these have the same basic strategy. So negative 16 times 3 fourths c. And this time I'm going to write it all in one, one string. Negative 16 times 3 fourths c. And we're going to minus, well, it's negative 16 times negative 5 eighths, or you can think of it as adding. 16 because a negative times a negative is a positive times 5 eighths d and I like writing it all in one string because it's a little bit neater and next what does that equal well one shortcut you might realize we're going to multiply negative 16 times 3 and then divide by 4 but because you can think of division as a 4 right division of 4 is multiplying by 1 fourth if you ever thought about that, for example, 100 divided by 4 is 25, right? But 100 times 1 fourth is the same thing. It's also 25. Why is this useful? Because when you're multiplying, you can change the order. So with negative 16 times 3 fourths C, I can rewrite it as negative 16 times 3 times 1 fourth, right? So instead of dividing by 4, I'm multiplying by 1 fourth. Still, we still have the C variable. And multiplication is useful because I can change the order. So what I'm going to do, you can think of this 1 fourth being multiplied by the six, negative 16 first. And that's useful, right? Because multiplying by a fourth is the same as dividing by 4. And by switching that order, we can think of this as negative 16 divided by 4. And what's that? Well, that's just negative 4. And a short way of doing this, or looking at this, is to cancel out. Right? You see these two will divide. So 4 goes into 16 four times. And that's going to make our life a little bit easier because negative 4 times 3 is the next step, and that's just negative 12. And you get the hang of canceling out as, as you get more practice. Here, same principle. 8 will go into 16 twice because we can move this around and think of dividing by 8 as multiplying by 1 eighth. And we can move that around and, and divide 16 by 8 first. So 2 is left over, and 2 times 5 is, is 10, right? So we get negative 12c plus 10d. Don't forget that variable. A couple more to go. Um, let's try this next one. It's a little different just because we have to remember that you have to always simplify as far as you can. So now we're, we're starting with a number and a variable as our first factor times 5x plus 6. What do we do? Well, 4x times 5x is first. And one easy way to think about this is to multiply the coefficients, right? Look for that pattern, and also multiply the variables. So 4 times 5 is 20. x times x is x to the second power. And then we're adding, well, this time we're going to multiply 6 by 4, x, and think of it as 6 times 4, or 24, x. And, and there, right, we're basically done. Um, I, I, sorry, I actually thought we were going to factor further because I, I thought that um, this was just going to be x to the first power, but it's x to the second, so we can't combine these two terms yet. All right, keep going. The next one, and I'm just trying to give you plenty of practice here so you can really master this, these kind of problems. What if we had 5r times r squared minus 3t? Well, this is almost the same problem, right? 5r times r squared, that's going to mean 5 times r times r squared, which is really r times r, minus 5r times 3t. Well, 5 times 3 is 15, and r times t is just, we don't know that, it's rt. What's this right here? Well, r times r times r is just r to the third power. So we can write this as 5 times r to the third power minus 15rt. And there, you know, and that's that one. 
And I think I'm going to cut this off here. In the next video, we'll try some other examples. Thanks for watching.